Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing, of course, a color in chat. I am in the mood for some Stardust Space Lust action, so that is what we're going to be occupying our time with today. Well, I am anyway. You can color in whatever you'd like, whether it's my books, someone else's books, whether you're cleaning the house, doesn't matter. Today, it is going to be a Stardust Space Lust day, and just give me one second. It's just one of those mornings when you wake up super parched, and my tripod is going through it at the moment. But when is it not going through it, right? So today we are going to be playing with pens. I am in the mood for pens. I am going to be primarily playing with, or at least I think so, the Pentel Dual Metallics. Now there seems to be quite a bit of confusion regarding these pens because these pens are known as the Pentel Hybrid Dual Metallics in Europe perhaps the rest of the world, but in the US they are known as the Sparkle Pop. They are the exact same pen. FYI, if you're curious, they are exactly the same. The pen barrels are different, so they're merely cosmetic differences, but not differences in performance. These are what the Sparkle Pops look like, and these are the dual metallic. So you can see that the pen barrels are different. You've heard me talk about this. If you watch my color and chat for Spooky Sweets 2.0, the Milkshake Girl, I did go through and show you that they are exactly the same, just a different barrel. That said, I need to grab a sheet of backing paper because I will be using Cali Art Marker as well, so give me one second. We are good to go. If you have any of my books, the physical copies, not PDFs, I obviously recommend using a backing paper or board cardstock of some kind so that you don't damage the pages because this paper, of course, is not designed to withstand markers or heavy watercolor use without a backing paper. So this is the girl that we are going to be coloring in today. Probably should have done this part off camera because this is going to be the boring part. This is the part nobody likes to do. It's filling in, well at least nobody on my planet enjoys this. It is filling in the background with a block of color. I think today, am I going to want to introduce any more color blocks in the background? Um. Let's see here, I wasn't anticipating adding anything extra to the background, however, I think that I am going to add just a little bit of something here to break up the background color just a bit. So that will do it, and now I'm going to go in with the Cali Art marker and do the background. I have no idea at this point what else I'm going to be using in addition to the hybrid metallics and this particular Cali Art marker. So for now, this is just what we're gonna get started with, and I'm going with a deep purple today. In this book so far, I've played with a couple of different colored backgrounds, not just galaxy black. We know the standard spacey black. I did a, a hot pink. I did do the black, of course, and I did this kind of fiery color. If you are interested in watching more of the videos related to this book, I do have a playlist dedicated to it. I have a playlist dedicated to each of my books. So if you're ever jonesing to watch a Spooky Sweets color and chat video or a color with me video, Dark Garden, Desert Muse, We Wicked, any of my books. I mean, I have so many books out at this point, but if you're ever in the mood to Stick with one particular book, check out the playlist because every color with me and color and chat video is going to be in that playlist. All right, I'm going to fill in the background and then I will check right back in with you. So the base layer of the background is done and I am going to be trying something that I did in my Spooky Sweets 2.0 milkshake color and chat, which is I'm going to do a tonal textured background but now is the moment of truth. I have tested this out on my tester page and I don't like the way it looks. But 
you have to take risks. Here's proof. I tested out a couple of different shades of lavender and pink. But I, I want to try it. I'm itching to try it. No, the results are not what I wanted. But curiosity. I mean, we all know what they say about curiosity and the cat, right? The cat died. Curiosity killed that feline. But, you know, I'd rather try it and regret it than never having tried it at all, right? There's another saying that goes something like that, right? So I'm not seeing a whole lot of a difference here. I am seeing the mottled texture that I saw in my Spooky Sweets color and chat because these are two different papers entirely. So of course it is not going to absorb the same. So yeah, this is giving the background a little bit of texture, which is fine. So that's cool. Is it necessary? No, but in the name of experimentation, do it, do it, do it. You can see something there, right? It's not flat color. <clears throat> and that's really the whole point of this, is to simply give it a little bit of a textura, texture for you English speakers out there. But I think you gathered what that word was, right? So for this page, I'm going to be a good girl this time. Surprise, surprise, I know, I know. Hang on to your chairs, fan yourselves, call your local priest, your vicar if you're European. Your witch doctor, call somebody because I know, I just said I'm going to be a good girl for once and this needs to be documented in the annals of history. But no, I'm going to be good and I am going to and I'm hesitating now, okay? Goodness, you see, I, I hesitate when it comes to goodness. No, but I am going to, I think, do most of the background before I carry on to the rest of the illustration. So I am going to, as I mentioned, of course, do a star field in the background, and I'm going to be using for said star field a Posca marker as well as <clears throat> the silver dual metallic or silver sparkle pop. I will have all of the art supplies that I use on this page linked down below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to list both the Pentel metallic and the sparkle pop. I haven't checked before I film this video if the sparkle pops are less expensive versus the dual metallics, I don't know. But if they are around the same price, I will be listing both because these generally tend to be around $14 for the entire set. I have no idea what the Sparkle Pop cost is, but I will have them both listed below because I know that packaging is very important to some people and if you want to spend more or less, that's one thing, but some people will be willing to spend more for packaging, so I don't know which one is going to be more. But anyway, I will have both listed below, but do keep in mind that they are absolutely the same pen, so there's no need to purchase both. No need. No need. No need. I'm not trying to lie to you and tell you that they're two different pens and you should get them both because they work differently. No. Get one set because they work exactly the same. So let's go ahead and get on into the star field. Shall we? Oh, you know what? I kind of would like to do some purple stars. I don't know if I have a marker, a lavender marker. Let's check one of my little art supply coffins here. This is where I keep my spare Poscas and sundry other pens. No, it does not appear that I do. I have a pink one, green. Aww. Wah, wah. Well, there goes that dream. Oh, you know what I do have? What I do have is Le Souffle and do I not have a Moonlight? No, I don't have a Moonlight. Really? 
breaking my heart. What is this? What is it, please? Would you like to see my pen box? This is how I have all of these little boogers organized. Okay, so it looks like my dreams of a creamy purple background with, well, rather creamy purple stars in the background is going to be dashed, but that is okay. That is okay because the souffle should work. Now here's the thing about the souffle pen. I have used these in several of my videos. If you've been with me for a while and you watch my videos religiously, you've seen this. But for those of you who are new, I'm going to, or rather, oh! What is, what, what is growing out of my marker? No, no, what? Okay, so that was pigment. Are you serious? Look at, do you see this? How did that happen? The pigment somehow congealed? Ew. Okay, look. We're having a leakage issue. Do you see this? Do you see that? Oh my gosh, I'm out of frame right here. Do you see that? How it's gloopy and thick there? What is this congealing issue? Has anybody had this happen with these calyards before? Ew. Okay, well that one's gonna have to be stored upright. Ew. I'm trying to teach the children something and then I get interrupted by a faulty marker. Okay, so what I was saying, is that the souffle markers are very hit or miss with people. When I first purchased them, I had a lot of people telling me how much they hated them, and I said, wait, blah, 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 blah. Give me a couple of days, let me figure out a way to use them, and I will convince you that they are worth your time. I did a color and chat with Desert Muse in which I showed you guys a few different techniques. Well, rather one technique that's kind of a multi-step technique that is not something that, it's not a technique that was intended to be used for these pens. It's kind of, I, I hate to sound as though I'm tooting my own horn here, but it's something that I came up with while I was working with them. Because the thing about these pens is that these are designed to work on slick surfaces. So plastic, glass, acetate, which is basically plastic, and things of that nature. And what happens with the souffles is that they are supposed to dry down to a 3D kind of surface, kind of like a faux enamel. So you see this right here, they go on glossy and they're kind of yucky. And when you color over a dark color like this purple, you can't even see it, right? However, as it begins to dry, it begins to opacify and then you start to see it. So these are a little bit tricky to work with. I don't think that I'm going to be employing that technique that I mentioned a second ago. If you would like to see that in action, by all means, go watch the other videos in which I use these pens. But for now, I'm going to use them as just plain old gel pens. Now, you do have to be quite careful when using these because they do take quite a bit longer to dry than a standard gel pen. No, you don't have to sit here and let the page dry overnight or anything like that. But you do have to be cognizant of where you're placing the color because number one, it is difficult to see until it begins to dry. And number two, yeah, it, it's gotta dry. It, it's gotta take its time to do its thing. So, you see this? It's opacifying and if you can see on the page, just keep your eyes over here where I was applying the pen and you're going to see it slowly begin to show itself. I will be doing silver and white stars as well. You can see as the little dots are beginning to dry, they form a little halo around the edge. Which of course is to be expected because the ink is going to be thinner along the rim 
of the dots. <laughs> but now we get to play acrobatics over here and try to figure out how to place my arm so that I don't touch any of the little dots. So I'm going to finish up the rest of the star field off camera because I am going to be applying quite a bit more, just the white and silver, so you aren't going to be seeing anything amazing. But when I return, hopefully all of these will be dry so that you can see how opaque they are. Just a super quick check-in because I have been introducing a little bit of something into the background. So I grabbed a Sharpie after I filled in her hair and I wanted to add just a little bit of shadowing and definition to the figure herself. So I'm going to be going in and just adding some shadowing with a Sharpie, nothing special. I'm not doing anything special here. This is just basic stippling. Stippling, if you are unaware with the technique, is simply making dots. So this is what I'm doing. That's literally all I'm doing. Now, of course, the spacing is going to be much closer than that, but that's it. And I'm going to go around and do it all over the place just to give her a little bit more of a robust outline. I'll see you again soon. Okay, moving on to her skin. I could not decide if I wanted to give her a dusty pink skin tone or a gray, so we're going to do both. I'm going to lay down the gray, I think, and then figure it out from there. Oh, Jesus. This marker's dying, so. Um. <laughs> So I think her skin is going to be a dusty pink after all. Seriously? Ugh. Story of my life. I like the gray. The gray with the purple is cute. I actually kind of don't even want to do the pink now. I think I should keep the color perhaps in her hair and in her outfit. So no. Do you see, is this coming off on screen, how pathetic I'm being, that this marker is dead? I mean, it's been dead for, it feels like the past century from what it looks like anyway, and yet I'm still continuing to fuss with it. Because I wanted to use it. Ha! Huh. The fine tip side of the marker is still a little bit juicy. Not for much longer, but it is. Do I dare now? Do I dare? Of course I do. Of course I do. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of an 80s style 
makeup situation then, I guess. And then we'll add some of that shadow down below. I am not going to fuss with the face any longer until I get the gel pens in order because I don't know what I'm going to do. I thought that I wanted to use them all, but now my brain is saying, hey, you should stick with the purples, the silvers, and the golds. And then I'm like, you know what? Shut up. Brain, I do what I want. But for her eye makeup, we are going to stick with the purple. I think. <laughs> Um, let's do, no, we're not, we're going to do blue. Oh my God, these pens are so delicious. Do you see that? Do you even see that? Oh. I live for these. I mean, look at that. Yum e Yum, 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 yum. Do we want to keep this cool toned? Let's keep her eyes cool toned and then her outfit can be whatever it wants to be, I guess. Actually, no, her eyes will not be completely cool toned because what I'm going to do is put a stripe of this orange that I am dying to use. Look at that. It just, it reminds me of liquid aluminum. Metallic liquid aluminum that has been somehow put into a pen. I'm living for it. These pens just lend themselves so well to this book. <sighs> Love. And we shall do more of that blue. That is some complicated lipstick, but I'm into it. And now let's do a little bit of purple. It looks a bit blue, but that's okay. Pinky red eyes are always a good idea, are they not? I say so. So she's going to get pinky red. I love this pen. I mean, I love them all, but this one's really fun. So now, God, now is where I start running into what am I going to do next territory? I'm going to do the outfit, and then once that is complete, because there's going to be a whole lot going on down here, then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of the face, because it definitely needs some more shading and some more color, but right now, I just don't know. So we are going to continue on with the outfit, and I will be filling it in, I believe, mostly with the dual metallics. I don't know yet. That very well may change, but for the moment, that is what we are going to do. I 
kind of didn't want her to turn into a big old sparkle bomb, but I mean, if that's what she wants me to do, that's what she wants me to do. Who am I to deny her? So I think this figure is going to be a whole lot of sparkle. I don't know if I'm going to complete, well, no, I know for a fact that I'm not going to complete this today, but I don't know how far into this I'm going to dive. So for the moment, I'm going to exit stage left and I will see you guys again in the next segment. Will that be today? Will that be tomorrow? I have no idea. But this is the land of YouTube, so you won't even know that I'm gone. With that said, au revoir. For now, anyway. One more thing before I end today's session. So just a little tip. If you, I'm going to be going in with the Kuretake Starry Metallic Watercolors next, but if you are going to be filling in any areas of color with either metallic watercolors or glittery gel pens, one thing that I like to do is go in with a similar color, and this will not completely alleviate streakiness, but it will make it a little bit less evident. So for instance, I went through on the circles in the background and I went in with a couple of different shades of orange and a yellow and then over top I will be applying the watercolor so that will again it isn't going to completely alleviate any streakiness but it is going to make it less visible. I've talked about these before I talk about them all the time they are again the Kuretake Starry I will have them linked down below as with everything all of the supplies are going to be linked down below as usual I think I've said that already but Inevitably, somebody's going to be wondering what they are, so go ahead and take a look down below. So I'm going to go in with the gold over top like this. And this is going to make the paper crunchy. I know that there are people out there who hate using watercolors in my books because of the paper stock. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we all have our own preferences. So some people like it, some people don't. Others are simply neutral on the entire matter. So try it once, try it twice, form an opinion on the third go round is how I see things. So if you've never tried it before, give it a shot. My books are absolutely, definitely, in no way, shape, or form designed to accept watercolor, but you know my mantra, do what you want. So that's exactly what I do. And I encourage you to do the same. I am going to be applying two different layers of watercolor because one simply is not sufficient. So at least for my taste and in this particular application. So I just wanted to check in really quickly to let you know what those circles were and just to pass along a little tip from me to you because it does make the color stand out a bit more if you do apply a base first. Hello, hello again everyone, it is a new day. It is a couple of days later actually, so I think it's time to wrap this up. She's been sitting around unfinished for way too long. I'm sick and tired of it being unfinished, so let's go ahead and get this baby done, shall we? So, uh, shoot. I realized just before I finished film, oh wait, no, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Wait. This is the color I want. Do you see this pink? I decided that I wanted to make her skin pink, but I, I think we're just gonna go with the purple then because I can't seem to find where on earth I put that pink marker. Are you kidding me right now? No, that's definitely not it. Oh my God. Well, there goes that plan. So she's going to have purple flesh, I suppose. I wanted to play up the pink a little bit because she does have 
some pink on her outfit. This pink in particular is the one I want. How on earth does one go about losing such a giant marker? Pray tell. My goodness. Well, that's unfortunate. But okay. Uh, wait. Might this be the one? Yay! I found it. And of course, this <laughs> this may be a mistake. So, we'll see. But uh, I want to... The gray was just bothering me. She was looking a bit flat. So I thought, let me put some pink on there and see what happens. Is it going to be a mistake? I don't know. Maybe. But that's part of the fun, isn't it? I just thought of something. I just thought of something that we could do that might be kind of fun. Um, okay. Ooh, okay, okay, change of plans. So now, unfortunately, I came up with this after I already did this. Do you see how this line is kind of going more, it's uh, skewed it to the left a little bit and this is coming to the right? Well, that's okay, but we're gonna leave her like this. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's cool, her little triangulation of the face. Okay, so now I'm going to, is this the right color? I'm going to clean up the purple just a touch so that we have a little bit of that triangulation going on over here as well. Oh, I like that. That's fun. Okay, we're going to leave that and then should we just leave it exclusively on the face? Let's pull it down just a little. into her chest. Ooh. The color selections are a bit strange, to be fair, but playing with unconventional colors is a good time, so why not? And actually, let's just go ahead and do this entire section pink color. Okay. I'm cool with that. It mimics a shadow. <sighs> Should we add some color to the face though? I do want to add perhaps some shadowing and then some more detailing with other colors. So let me go in with the gray. Now unfortunately my selection of grays in the Cali Arts is being greatly diminished because I use these a lot for my architecture illustration that I do. If you are unaware, I do illustrate the architecture out here in Palm Springs. It's just in a little hobby of mine. I actually have another Etsy shop that I dedicate strictly to architecture. So I use these markers in my architectural illustration. So I go through the neutral colors quite a bit and they're very useful for shading, obviously. And unfortunately, all of mine are dying, so we're kind of stuck with that. Shoot, I want to do something in her face, but I don't know what. So we're just gonna leave her be for the moment and then we'll carry on with the rest of her hair and her outfit. So I'm thinking now that we've put some pink on her face that doing some pink in the hair would probably make sense or purple even um, let's see this is a beautiful shade of eggplant I love 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 this shade I'm not a big fan of the blue purples the bluish purples like this that you see in the background I'm definitely more of a warm purple kind of gal. So deep red violets, eggplants, 
those kind of things. Even this shade right here that I'm using on her hair is nice. And that ripping and tearing that you hear is the dog. So, pardon the beast. I don't know what he has, but he always manages to find something. Isn't that just their way? A piece of scrap paper, I think. Okay, so I like that. And now, in keeping with the purple thing, let's go ahead and do the rest of her outfit in similar colors because we're already way out of whack everywhere. So I'm going to keep the little robes that she's wearing in the purples as well. So we're going to do, let's see, we used the pink, we used the blue, and the gold, or is that the orange? Did I use the gold or did I use the orange? I think I think I used the orange. So let's do that. I'm going to, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so I will, I'm gonna fill this in and then I will check back in in a minute. Okay, so I am going to do it. I'm going to do it and am I going to regret it? Well, it is highly likely that I certainly will be regretting this decision, but it's something that's nagging at me and I need to do it. So what am I going on and on about? Her face is going to be yellow. So let us proceed with creating a little jaundice queen here. But you know, when something is just nagging at you, you need to do something about it and come what may, regardless of the ramifications, just do it. You'll never learn if you don't do it. So. Uh, Jaundice Queen, how do we feel about this? I actually don't hate it, so uh, good call, I think, on my part. At least, <laughs> not because this has suddenly turned her into a masterpiece, but because the gray was just irritating me so much that I felt as though something needed to be done, and I think that something was adding the yellow. So her face still definitely needs to be cleaned up quite a bit. There's a lot of detailing work that still needs to be done on this gal. So we are not finished yet, but there's just little things that you have to take care of sometimes before you jump into the other elements of a page in order for something to feel more complete and to feel more correct, right? So for instance, her face. We are going to go in and add some of this delicious ruby pink glittery metallic yumminess. Is it necessary? No, but do we want to do it? Yes. It's cute. I like it. Now, to be quite frank with you, I don't think that the rest of this is going to merit any sort of filming time. So I believe the best thing to do at this point would be to add in all of the details that I need to add in. And then at the very, very end when I'm adding in the highlights and such, then I'll check in with you and I'll close out this video. So. I'm just going to be working on her face a little bit, adding detailing to her eyes, and then I'll see you in a bit. Hello, hello everyone. So we are going to finish up this little lady today. I did do a little bit of work off camera on her as you can tell, but it's time to finish her up. I tell you, if I have a page just sitting around for days unfinished, it drives me nuts. So today is the day. Uh, admittedly, there isn't going to be a whole lot that needs to be done on her. Iced coffee swig. Give me one second. But there is enough to keep me busy for just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and jump right back into her. I should have reviewed the footage because I can't remember where it was that I left off. I believe when I left off, I was putting in these extra little glittery accents, I believe, right? But I, I mean, I suppose it doesn't really matter. But if that is the case, then I did go in and I added a few more in the hair and on her robe. I'm, I'm going to assume this is a robe. So 
today is going to be the finale. So let us go in with the Posca. A couple of you have noticed this before, by the way, that I will be filming and then you'll notice the video will cut and then I will return to a piece and then you think, wait a minute, your nails are different. Yes. <laughs> I paint my nails with a fiendish frequency. I paint my nails, I change my nail color, what, at least once a week, at least. So usually it's more like two. <laughs> So I am, um, if I'm lazy, I'll keep the same color for a week, but generally speaking, yeah, uh, twice. If it's a color I, that's classic that I truly love, such as an eggplant purple or red, then generally those will stick around for about a week or green. I love greens as well. Um, but... Do greens stick around too? Golds, I should say. No, uh, yeah. So <laughs> reds, purples, and certain shades of green tend to stick around for a week, but other colors, just a few days. I know it sounds crazy and high maintenance, but welcome to my life. My nails were blue when I started this vlog, and suddenly they've become this kind of nudie, creamy, corally color. I love nail polish. I love nails. Well, what else is new? I do not care for the highlights in this section, so um, I think in this case they're going to bother me enough to warrant their being covered up, maybe. Oh, no, not going to be possible. Okay, so never mind, then they're going to stay just the way they are. Uh, I wonder, however, if I can perform the surgery necessary to cover them up with the dual metallic. It's a bit of a struggle, but it seems to be working. I'm sorry, it just, the white highlights in this section were completely killing the dual metallic glitter. Highlights just don't always work, you know? So we're going to put it there, and then she does need a little bit on her face. It's cute on the lashes, and let's go ahead and give her some hair sparklies. Well, why not? Yeah, okay. It's not sparkle overkill as I've been <laughs> prone to getting into lately, but I think it's it's just enough. I think the sparkle is particularly effective on abnormal color, skin color, so just livens it up a little bit. Okay, so now that we've experienced the disaster of the highlights up here, I was planning on adding some down here, but I'm not going to do that after all. What I'm going to do instead, I believe, is go in with this silver uniball. I can't for the life of me find the name of this particular pen. It is a uniball pen. It's a uniball signo or sino pen, but it's an ultra fine. 
I purchased mine open stock at Michael's. If I do find the link on Amazon, I will have it down below, but if not, then I'll at the very least just link it as a uniball. Because I swear, I don't, I just, the barrel doesn't give any indication of what the name of this pen is. It literally just says Uni Ball Japan L10, 110, Japan 110, and that's it. The ink, the little ink, uh, it's not really a cartridge, is it? But the little ink uh, container does have some numbers printed on it, so maybe that might help, but I don't know. Anyway. Let's go ahead and add just a little bit. Ooh, not too hot on that. I'm honestly not too hot on that. Shoot! Okay, yeah, I don't like colors on top, even metallics on top of this purple. I just, I don't. Great, and now that I've screwed it up, uh, well, we're going to cover it up. Because, I don't know, it just, it does not work for me. So, here. Hey, you know, sometimes things work and then sometimes they don't. And in this instance, I don't know what it is, but I'm just not at all feeling the metallic or the whites, anything over this color. I just don't. I don't like it. Great, now that looks like a mess, doesn't it? Well, oh well. We're not going to cry over a coloring book. If I'm being entirely honest with you, I generally see my coloring books as a sketchbook of sorts. Not the illustration process for the books themselves, but the coloring, if I'm experimenting with colors or supplies, etc., etc. I don't worry too much about the outcome. I mean, yes, of course, I'm going to be a little bit concerned every now and then if I go in with a page and I have a plan for it and everything goes awry. However, in general, I tend to view them as just, you know it, as a playground of sorts. And, um that point is going to piggyback into another topic of discussion. So the Macaron sketchbook project that you guys have all been seeing lately it is finally beginning to be a bit more fleshed out and I'm getting a better idea of what I would like to do with it. And one thing that I'm going to do with it is by the time that you watch this video, you. I've probably already revealed these details and all of that, so I have no issue discussing it right now. But the plan for the sketchbook project is to release, well, first of all, if you have ever attended a comic convention or if you frequent any independent bookstores, you are probably familiar with the zine sections and the zine tables that everyone has, right? There are, Zines and sketchbooks are a popular product that is offered by artists. They will compile a collection of their sketches into a sketchbook or a zine of sorts, and then they will offer that for sale. So if somebody is interested in purchasing um, a collection of the creator's private sketches, or perhaps they can't afford an original, but they would like to bring something back, then a sketchbook is an excellent way to do that. Some of these sketchbooks have themes, some of them do not. But what I'm getting at is that that's what I want to do. So that is what I'm going to attempt to do with the Macaron sketchbook project. I'm going to be releasing it as a compilation of sketches sketchbook. And then for those of you who are diehard colorists who are interested in doing something with the book, I would like to hopefully, fingers crossed, release a coloring book version of it. So you have the option of purchasing both, one or the other. So it just, it, it's really up to your personal preferences, but the whole point behind that is that I preach until I'm blue in the face that I want you guys to be 
experimental and that I would like to facilitate your experimentation and you're just having fun in my books and releasing my sketchbook as a coloring book. I think, I hope that will inspire you guys to get even messier because the artwork in that sketchbook coloring book will not be as tight lined as this. So for instance, if you take a look at any page in here, the lines are still a little quirky. You know, that's just my style. Nothing is perfect. What I do, by the way, is I release my books or I draw my books pencil on paper and then I will put them into the computer and then I will digitize them in a way that retains a lot of my wonky line work. Some artists prefer to digitize them perfectly, but I, I like retaining that kind of funky, sketchy kind of a look. And the sketchbook is going to play on that even further because the lines are not going to be, even though these are still a little quirky and wonky, the lines in the sketchbook are going to be even more so, a lot more so. I'm not sure when this video is going to go up. I know that I have a few videos in the queue that will be on their way to you guys soon. So this one is probably going to be quite a ways down the pipeline, but I don't know yet. She has a bit of a retro 80s look, wouldn't you agree? Is that wishful thinking on my part? I think she's picking up some retro vibes. Maybe, yeah. I mean, just about anything that comes out of my little brain is going to have some sort of retro connotation, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway, I believe this little lady is complete. Just about, just a few more highlights, I think, and she will be good to go. Oh man, I set my Posca marker aside for a couple of seconds and uh, I have my air conditioner on and the ceiling fan, so it dried up just a little bit. Started to get a little bit crusty. Got to be careful with these Posca markers. Cap them, cap them, even when you're using them because they will dry out with a quickness. It's quite annoying. Okay, I'm gonna call it done on this because I got lots to do today and it is time to move on. But I think she's cute. Am I in love with it? No, but uh, she was fun. So that's what matters, right? Just having a good time and enjoying yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate your patience and your willingness to listen to my blah, blah, blah. But I do hope you enjoyed this. Thank you to everyone who has been purchasing my books, enjoying them, sending me feedback to everyone who's a member of the coloring group. Mwah, mwah. Extra kisses and thank you to you. I do not own that group, by the way, but if you are interested in joining the group, please do so. They are on Facebook. Thank you once again. That's going to do it for me. Check down below for the supplies and for links to my social and to my website. And I will be seeing you guys again very soon for another video.